light is visible to all yes sir okay so there yes are... sir so in yesterday classes previous classes we have discussed about the chick dip so i told you uh chick and lip are muscular membranous structures that have externally the skin and the internally mucous membrane and the muscular structures so between the mucous membrane and muscular structures there have some some gland that was labial gland and the buccal gland i told you in case of the chick there was three gland in case of the cattle dorsal buccal gland ventral buccal gland and the middle buccal gland so here today we will discuss about the tongue of all domestic animals so this tongue is also a muscular membranous structures tongue is also muscular membranous structures that is situated inside the oral cavity that is situated inside the oral cavity and it lies between the it lies between the uh, floor of the floor of the oral cavity and 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 from the ventral to the heart palate so if you will see the tongue this tongue is a mobile prehensile and the tactile organs i told you in case of the lip in case of the horse the lip is the prehensile organ lip is the prehensile organ prehensile organ means that is the that help in the catching the food or grasping the food here in case of the ox in case of the ox tongue is the prehensile organ tongue is the prehensile organ major prehensile organ is the tongue in case of the ox but in case of the horse it was lip lip was the major prehensile organ in case of the horse but here in case of the ox prehensile organ is the tongue so this tongue is the mobile it means it have movement and prehensile and the tactile organ because it have also the some sensory structures that's why it is also the tactile organ all these things are responsible for the chemical and the mechanical selection of the food chemical and mechanical selection of the food for the animals here another thing it play important role in the mastication deglutition and sucking in the new born also as i told you this tongue is situated on the floor of the oral cavity floor of the oral cavity in between the in between the two ramus of the mandible in between the two ramus of the mandible i i have already discussed about the mandible dorsal <coughs> ramus and the vertical ramus so these things this uh, tongue is situated between the two horizontal ramus of the mandible and it is supported by the myelohyoidus muscles as i told you this myelohyoidus muscles is situated between the horizontal ramus of the mandible and caudally it tongue is attached with the hyoid bone caudally it tongue is attached with the hyoid bone i told you in hyoid bone there is a some lingual process there is one small rounded lingual process so that lingual process is posteriorly attached with the tongue lingual process of the hyoid process is attached with the caudal part of the tongue so if both jaw are in contact then complete oral cavity is filled with the tongue if you will see the complete complete in contact with the upper jaw and the lower jaw then this oral cavity is completely fixed inside the completely accommodate the entire cavity of the oral cavity so this tongue has the matter of striated muscles striated muscles some connective tissues 
adipose tissue granular tissue what are these things adipose tissue granular tissue we will discuss in the histology classes because what type of the gland is there what type of the connective tissue is there we will discuss in the histology classes here if you will see the next thing the picture of the tongue there is some network tissue so if you will see the description purpose of the tongue if you will see the description purpose of the tongue this tongue has the three parts tongue has three parts root body and the tip root body and the tip the posterior part posterior part is the root you see this one this is the root of the tongue this is the root of the tongue here this middle portion this entire is the body of the tongue body of the tongue and here is the tip of the tongue tip of the tongue root body root body and the tip of the tongue so there are three structure three three part three part of the tongue that is the root body and the tip now root as name indicating it is the posterior part and attached with the hyoid bone attached with the hyoid bone this posterior part of the tongue is attached with the hyoid bone and and soft palate and the pharynx soft palate and the pharynx so if you will see the picture of the tongue here you see this one is the epiglottis this one is the epiglottis this is the this is the membranous structures of the soft palate soft palate so this, so, this, this, is, this, this root is attached with the soft palate soft palate and the soft palate and the pharynx and hyoid bone also now this middle muscular part this is the this one is the body this entire is the body this one is the body and anterior most conical part this is the tip anterior most conical part is the tip so the middle part is the body that forming the most of the part of the tongue this body is the bulk of the tongue which has extensive lateral surface along with the dorsal and the ventral surface so see this body have the dorsal surface ventral surface and lateral surface also now three pointed three pointed anterior most part of the tongue is called the tip tip of the tongue this is dorso ventrally flattened this is dorso ventrally flattened this one this is tip this is dorsal dorso ventrally flattened and it has the dorsal part and the ventral part because the tip is the somewhat thin than that of the body so in the tip of the tongue there is no lateral no lateral surface here there is no lateral surface but the body have the somewhat thicker part so this body have the dorsal surface ventral surface and also the lateral surface lateral surface so if you will see the uh mucus membrane of the tongue if you will see the mucus membrane of the tongue this mucus membrane entirely cover the dorsum of the tongue dorsum of the tongue dorsum of the tongue that is the dorsal surface of the tongue or this is also called dorsum lingui dorsal surface of the tongue dorsal aspect of the tongue is also called dorsum lingui so this mucus membrane is rough and thick on the dorsal surface of the tongue mucus membrane 
is generally rough and thick on the dorsal surface and it wears the greater part while the ventral and the lateral surface has thin mucous membrane has thin mucous membrane okay so it will be it will ask you the mucous membrane of the tongue at which place you will get the thickest mucous membrane so you have to answer the dorsal aspect of the tongue is the thickest mucous membrane whereas the ventral and lateral surface have thin mucous membrane if you will see the some foldings of the mucous membrane in the tongue there are three foldings of the mucous membrane first is a frenulum lingui frenulum lingui anterior pillar or palatoglossal arch and the glosso epiglottic fold i already discussed in the last classes that what is the frenulum lingui this frenulum lingui is the nothing this is the fold of the mucous membrane this is the fold of the mucous membrane that connect the ventral surface ventral surface of the tongue to the floor of mouth cavity to the floor of the mouth cavity so frenulum lingui is nothing that is the fold of mucous membrane that situated or that connect the ventral surface of the tongue to the floor of oral cavity another fold that is the anterior pillars or the palatoglossal arch name indicating palatoglossal arch palato means palatine it means the soft palate or hard palate glossal means the tongue so this anterior pillar attached to the tongue posterior aspect of the tongue or you can say the root of the tongue to the soft palate root of the tongue to the soft palate so anterior pillar or palatoglossal arch is the thing that is the fold of the mucous membrane that connect the root of the tongue to the soft palate okay likewise another fold that is the glosso epiglottic fold glosso epiglottic fold this glosso epiglottic fold name indicating glosso means tongue epiglottis means the epiglottis epiglottis that is the part of the larynx so a fold between the tongue and the epiglottis that is called the glosso epiglottic fold that a fold of the mucous membrane you see this is the epiglottis this one is the epiglottis and here between the epiglottis and the root of the tongue and one attachment with mucous membrane that that is called that is called glosso epiglottic fold that is called glosso epiglottic fold now if you will talk about the surface of the tongue surface of the tongue that is the two surface that is two surface what are those what are those dorsal surface dorsal. and the ventral surface dorsal surface and the ventral surface okay now dorsal surface i told you this dorsal surface is also called the dorsum lingui dorsal surface is also called dorsum lingui or the dorsum of the tongue don't confuse dorsal surface is called dorsum lingui so this dorsal surface facing towards the hard palate this tongue the dorsal surface either face karega towards the hard palate it facing towards the hard palate throughout except except the posterior part or the glosso epiglottic space except the posterior part or glosso epiglottic space so if you will discuss about the uh, dorsal surface of the tongue there are so many papillaries are present on the dorsal surface of the tongue what are those papillaries if you will see the dorsal surface of the tongue in the dorsal surface of the tongue you will get so many papillaries like filiform papillae fungiform papillae circumvalent papillae there are four major type of the papillae filiform fungiform lenticular and the circumvalent papillae lenticular and the circumvalent papillae lenticular and the circumvalent papillae one important thing if you will see the dorsal surface of the tongue on the posterior view you will get one oval elliptical rounded elevation this is the oval elliptical eminence on the posterior surface po sorry posterior part of the tongue you will get oval elliptical eminence that is called the torus lingui 
so you see this is the eminence this is called the torus wing this this elevation rounded over elevation is called the torus wing another thing just in front of the torus wing this is the torus wing this one just in front of the torus wing you see this one a transverse transverse funnel shaped depression is there this one a transverse funnel shaped group or depression is there that is called the fossa lingui that is called fossa lingui so on the dorsal surface of the tongue what you will find torus lingui and the fossa lingui or lingual fossa fossa lingui or lingual fossa both are the same and the torus lingui okay <clears throat> now if you will talk about the papillae i told you there are there are four major papillae that is the filiform fungiform lenticular and the circumvalent papillae one more papillae that is the conical papillae so you see this is the papillae filiform papillae fungiform papillae conical papillae lenticular papillae circumvalent papillae now you see this filiform papillae is here this one is the smaller one this is the filiform papillae how you will differentiate the filiform papillae and the fungiform papillae so this small small very small papillae multiple in number on the dorsal surface of the tongue or more prominent on the uh, anterior or front of the fossa lingui that is the filiform papillae here is the filiform papillae another the another papillae you see in the color picture yeah here you see here you see the filiform papillae this one is the filiform papillae and you can easily differentiate some smaller rounded elevated some whitish color papillae are you visible is it visible yes sir all? yes you see uh, yes sir you can easily differentiate you see this white rounded one this is the fungiform papillae this is the fungiform papillae the remaining all papillae in front of fossa lingui that is the filiform papillae this is filiform papillae and here here on the torus lingui on the torus lingui here also you see two kinds of the papillae is there on the torus lingui one is one is the white color rounded elevated papillae another one is the some smaller than some smaller than the this one so this rounded and white color elevated papillae that is the lenticular papillae and remaining this smaller one that is the conical papillae this one is the conical papillae so this lenticular papillae only you will found on the torus lingui on the surface of the torus lingui on the surface of the torus lingui and filiform and fungiform papillae you will found in front of the fossa lingui in front of the fossa lingui and here at this level you will found circumvalent papillae here in this picture it is not visible clearly here you see this one this rounded one this one this is the circumvalent papillae this is the circumvalent papillae this one is the circumvalent papillae so here you see i told you filiform papillae is a very fine pointed numerous and distributed throughout the dorsal surface of the tongue and just rostral to the fossa lingui just rostral to the fossa lingui and important thing is that this filiform papillae is the if you will see very fine then it will be visible it's it's caudally directed it's caudally directed and what is the role of this papillae what is the role of this papillae this papillae it gives the roughness and rest like nature to the tongue so it gives the it provides the roughness to the tongue and well adapted to use of the tongue as a prehensile as a prehensile organ during the grazing time so this papillae gives roughness like appearance or roughness like nature of the tongue so can animals graze animal catch the food during the grazing very 
comfortably okay another thing that is the conical papillae i told you this conical papillae are large blunt and conical lies on in front of the torus lingui another thing is the lenticular papillae lenticular papillae i told you lenticular papillae is found on the torus lingui lenticular papillae you will found on the torus lingui so these three papillae what are those these three papillae filiform papillae uh, fungi form sorry filiform conical and lenticular papillae these three are in mechanical in function mechanical in function means it's it help in the catching the food it help in the catching the food another thing another thing you see this picture lingual papillae in the fungi form papillae i have discussed about the discuss about the filiform conical and denticular papillae likewise fungi form papillae is a rounded three ended rounded three ended and it is scattered throughout the dorsum it is scattered throughout the dorsum and lateral surface of the body also and on the ends of the tip ends of the tip you can easily differentiate the fungi form papillae from that of the filiform papillae on the gross appearance in the gross appearance but in histologically we can more easily differentiate we will discuss in the histology section circumvallate papillae this is the very important circumvallate papillae is 8 to 17 in number 8 to 17 in number you have to remember this circumvallate papillae are number is the fixed that there is number is the 8 to 17 in number and it arranged in form of the long narrow group or irregular row you see this is in the group or irregular row important thing important thing it is situated on the lateral margin lateral margin of the root it is situated on the lateral margin of the root of the tongue another thing they are rounded they are rounded and their exposed surface shunk in a deep depression so this papillae this papillae you cannot this papillae you cannot feel on the gross appearance this papillae papillae you cannot feel with the with the touch on the gross appearance because this papillae goes inside in, in goes inside the tissue and it form a mot it form a mot or you can say like this this papillae is goes inside the tissue and it form a mot like appearance it form a mot like appearance and its sensory structure is situated within this mot so this circumvallate papillae is not elevated on the surface of the tongue it goes inside the tissue it goes inside the tissue and it form the mot hence they do not project above the surface of the tongue as i told you it do not project above the surface of the tongue important thing is that this fungi form and circumvallate papillae have the taste bud have the taste bud that's why it is the gustatory in function or it is the gustatory in nature so out of this five papillae only fungi form and circumvallate papillae have the taste bud remaining all are mechanical in function and these two are gustatory in function is it clear now what about the ventral surface of the tongue ventral surface of the tongue is related with the muscles related with the lingual muscles that is the muscles of the tongue so i told you these muscles are the mainly extrinsic muscles and some intrinsic muscles also there so on the root of the tongue we will discuss in the next classes also the whole muscles what are the different muscles of the tongue so on the root of the tongue and the lateral aspect gloto gloso epiglottic fold have many small orifices on the lateral surface of the root of the tongue on the lateral aspect of the root of the tongue we will found some small orifices some small orifices that orifices for the crypt of lingual tonsil lingual tonsil so lingual tonsil is there 
so lingual tonsils or a tissues is situated on the on the lateral aspect of the root of the tongue what is the meaning of tonsil that tonsil, tonsil is the nothing that is the accumulation of the lymphocytes we will discuss more in the histology about the tonsil so this is about the ventral surface now in case of the heart if you will say in case of the heart heart this tongue is very long and narrow tongue is very long and narrow body shows extensive lateral surface important thing oral lingua is absent tip is the spatula like and pigment mucous membrane is not pigmented you see this one this is the spatula like spatula like tip spatula like tip here important thing one more papilla is there that is the foliate papilla this one is the foliate papilla this one is the foliate papilla and important thing is the circumvallate papilla is only two in number circumvallate papilla is the two to three in number beside all all normal papilla there are one special type of the papilla that is the foliate papilla so you have to remember foliate papilla is present in case of the heart but that is absent in the ox absent in the ox this foliate papilla is also present in the dog so in case of the heart you have to remember circumvallate papilla are two in number and foliate papilla is present on the lateral surface of the root of the tongue and the tip is the spatula shape if you will see in case of the dog tongue is wide thin in front and the thick posteriorly here it is also more mobile more mobile because it is used to drink the intake of the liquids intake of the liquids or intake of the water one important thing is the sulcus lingui here in case of the dog you will see here on the dorsal surface of the tongue one you see one median line is there this is the sulcus lingui this is the sulcus lingui sulcus lingui only is present in case of the dog what about the papilla here also filiform papilla circumvallate papilla is 2 to 3 in number foliate papilla is there foliate papilla is small and important thing this fungiform papilla are red in color fungiform papilla are red in color one very important thing in case of the dog tongue here on the interior aspect of the tip of the tongue you will found some fusiform cord like structures fusiform fibrous tissue and made up of adipose tissue striated muscles that structures is called lysa that structures is called lysa one of fibrous cord like structures on the interior tip of the tongue that made up of the fibrous tissue adipose tissue and striated muscles fiber that is called lysa so this lysa facilitate to to catch the liquid feed or the water so this lysa is embedded in the genioglossus muscles genioglossus muscles so these things you have to remember lysa is present in case of the tongue of dog what about in case of the pig it is long and pointed the tongue is the tip is long and the pointed important thing is the circumvallate papilla is the two in number foliate papilla is there this is the tip of the tongue in case of the pig foliate papilla here is the this one is the foliate papilla on the lateral aspect of the root and here is the circumvallate papilla two in number okay now tongue of the whole work this is the almost triangular in appearance and the root of the tongue has the transverse row of the horny papilla this one this is the important thing on the root of the tongue you will found horny papilla horny papilla this one and it is almost triangular in shape transverse row of the horny papilla in case of the fall so this is the tongue of the fall so this is all about the tongue if you have any doubt any questions regarding this you can ask me today by 3 o'clock we will take one more classes
Okay. Okay. Okay, sir.